that online behavior helps you guide buyers through an admittedly complex buying process. Knowing what people are interested in, what their objections are, what their challenges are, and it makes your sales team significantly more effective. They're still necessary, but significantly more effective when armed with this knowledge. So then the question is, okay, well, if we need to nurture people through a process that's going to be long, we've got cynical buyers who don't want to hear from marketers, how do we do this? And this is what marketing becomes. Buyers need help. And Aaron Bazarian, who was running marketing at High Performance, had this challenge. Um, selling boring stuff to boring people. He's selling IT solutions to, uh, for DNS management and, and server configuration, I believe, to IT executives. Cynical about marketing. So he thinks, okay, well, how do I keep these buyers interested, engaged, entertained over a nurturing process that can last for many, many months? And he's wrestling with this. He's thinking about it. And um, he's up very late. And, and finally, his four-year-old son comes running down the stairs in Superman pajamas with a detachable cape. And at that point, um, Aaron realizes he's got his answer, and he creates the... Uh, the IT superhero themed campaign. And what this is, it's a set of animated webisodes. They're, they're a little bit funny, they're a little bit educational, but he strikes that balance between needing to keep people engaged and needing to educate them. I always describe lead nurturing as the art of maintaining permission to stay in front of the buyer. If you lose their interest, it doesn't matter what your content says. You've got to maintain their permission to stay in front of them with your messaging. So by coming up with things that are interesting, that are novel, that are friendly, that are fun, like these animated webisodes, Aaron was able to stay, to stay in front of them. And over time, understand that digital body language as it guided the buying process. Which leads to the next trend, which is, if we're going to develop these relationships through nurturing, We've got to first look at where we start, which is, which is the data that we need to build on top of. If you look at the difference between data and a relationship, right? As marketers, we, we live on a marketing database. It's wonderful. I've got name address, phone number, email address. That's not a relationship. Relationships we're all comfortable with from our, from our personal lives. Relationships come down to familiarity, recognition, understanding of, of people's needs and pains and interests, carrying the conversation from where it was last time, shared experiences. That's what the basis of relationships are. If you look at the data that we're building that on top of, though, 